I'm thankful the Lord brought you here today on this beautiful day. It is a beautiful day, amen, in February, yes. right? We'll take it. Uh, de definitely. I told Angel that uh, this is how it always is in February in <laughs> Iowa. So let me introduce you, uh, Angel Escalante Torres, otherwise known as Angel, if you don't mind welcoming him, please. Thank you. And by the way, I think most of you know muchas gracias, but uh, you learned some Swahili this morning. Asante sana is in Swahili means thank you very much. They speak that in Tanzania. We've been there. It's just great. All right. So the question comes, why are we doing this? Because uh, those of you that know me well know that we don't do commercials for any ministry in the middle of a worship service. It's not the way we normally do stuff. Uh, but so why are we doing it? Well, first of all, don't forget, this is the vision that I have cast for five and a half years as your senior pastor. We take care of the disciples of Jesus right here at Gloria Day, but we also reach out in Jesus' name to people beyond our walls. Amen? Amen. And so you guys have not only heard that vision from me and the other pastors and the rest of the staff, but also engaged in it. Uh, the, the best example is kudos again this fall, you gave $3,600 in gift cards that carried a family that was flooded out for four months, you guys. Way to go. They had nothing, but they had something because of you. And that, praise be to God for that. And then turned around and gave 10000 more bucks uh, for uh, the Expandable Shoe and Mama Kit project. And so you get it. This is our DNA. This is who we are. But even more important than what I just said is this. Because of Compassion International, Angel is a Christian. When you come to worship, the reason you come to worship is to give glory and honor to God because He saved your soul. Amen? Today you get to thank God for your soul and for Angel's soul as well. So all right, let's do the, the interview. Uh, so Angel, tell us about your life before Compassion International, if you don't mind. So I grew up in a very dangerous neighborhood and uh, before compassion, uh, was normal for me seeing guns, robberies, seeing how the young men kill each other. And I didn't grow up living with my father. I remember the house where it was supposed we were living together, but I don't have any memories about living with him. I live in the family house. I used to sleep with uncle, cousins, aunts, grandmother. And every day the house was full of relatives. I didn't even know what privacy mean. And despite being a child, I was acquiring bad attitude. And as I mentioned before, I, I remember I stole money from my mother and, and I used to steal money from an uncle. What for if I were just a child? It's because I used to gamble money at the street, to bet money playing poker, because that was for me before knowing compassion what it was normal. So I've told him, he said he stole money from his mother and his uncle to play poker. And I said, well, the fine Christians in this church don't play poker. <laughs> wink, wink. All right. So, uh, but, so you were stealing from your parent, or from who was your parents? I mean, your mom, of course. Uh, in fact, we do a, an event every year, I haven't told you this, but called Single Moms Morning Out, where we minister to single mothers like your mother yes. uh, that didn't have someone to partner with her. Uh, but so you were stealing money from them, and you were doing basically what was going on in your neighborhood, right? Yes. Uh, yes. Bad behavior. And so here comes Compassion, and you're sponsored. What age were you sponsored at, and what changes did it make in your life? Yeah, through Compassion, I joined Compassion when I was six years old. And at the beginning for me was something that didn't make sense. I was a, just a child and I went to the compassion program because friends looked for me. And to be honest, most of the time because of the food. But uh, as time passed, I was, a compassion program was making sense in my life. Com what compassion changed in my life? Compassion changed my environment. Compassion changed, gave me dream. Compassion gave me a family to stay, and through Compassion, I took a lot of classes, drum class, biblical class, and that happened that I d didn't have time to be at the neighborhood playing pocket, because after school, I have to be in Compassion program, learning, uh, 
um, doing a lot of things that was different than what I saw in the neighborhood. Yeah, so what we were saying is that he found, do you guys remember the old saying, idle hands are the devil's handiwork, right? And so what they do in compassion is give them purpose. And so he not only learned to play the drums, he also learned to play piano, he also learned to play guitar, and now you teach drums and guitar, if I'm not incorrect, right? And so that gave him a purpose and a place. But you also, and this is the most important thing in my opinion, you became a Christian. And so how did that happen, Angel? That happened, uh, I, right now I'm saying, but I love to, uh, the first time I received Jesus was a time that I was taking a class in Compassion Program. And at the end of the class that was talk uh, about Jesus, the, the director, Ask the question, who, who wants to receive Jesus? And everybody was like, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> and you say, okay, okay. Turn down and close your eyes uh, and just write up your hand. Who wants to receive Jesus? And I said, like, and when I saw my friend with the hands up, I did too. Positive peer pressure, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's good. But what happened that, because I did that, I have to go to the church. And at the church, being at the church because of that, I knew again about Jesus. They speak about Jesus. And at the end, they ask, who wants to receive Jesus? And I said again, oh, my God, what, what I did before, I did because of my friend. No, now I want to receive Jesus in my heart, me. And my friend was, oh, but you are Christian. What happened? Right. But that was the first time. I really received Jesus in my heart. And praise God. Can I just say that someone invested $38 a month in this man's eternity. Amen? I mean, praise be to God. Well, we, 38 bucks, come on, you can spend that on a night out at the restaurant. Easy, right? And he's going to go to heaven because of that. And besides that, he not only got Jesus, he got a wife. Yes. <laughs> And that's a good thing. A amen? amen? Amen. So they've been married three years. His wife's name is Daniela. Yeah. See. Yeah. All right. Very good. So tell him just briefly, what are you doing now? Now uh, I'm doing, uh, I'm giving what I receive. For example, at the church, I'm a leader of the youth main. I'm a BB core teacher. I'm a, uh, I'm a drum teacher also. And right now, uh, Compassion will help me pay me the college. Right now, I'm an accountant, and I work in taxes, work with taxes. And my wife that you mentioned, she was a sponsored child as well. Yeah, they met, so, they met in the program. Yeah. She was also sponsored as yeah. well. Um, so he's, he, I should explain. He, I, I mentioned to you that he worked at one time for Deloitte & Touche. He is yes. now working for the IRS in the Dominican Republic. All right, so yeah, so that's, he's an auditor for the IRS. And so, uh, praise God, you know, that, that this happened. And so, just want to encourage you, if you feel led, please don't feel pressured. There's no, none given, trust me. But it's $38 a month. If you see the packet that you think you might want to, just please don't take it unless you are going to sign on the dotted line and say we're going to uh, sponsor this child. It'll be up for about three weeks, so you got plenty of time to pray about it and see what God is leading you to do. So, all right, I'm going to ask Pastor Ben to come out. We're going to pray for Angel and his wife, uh, and uh, then we'll have you clap to thank him uh, for being here with us. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for your many blessings, and we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus, that you have rescued both Angel and Daniela from sin, death, and the power of the devil. And we ask, God, that you'd then surround them in the Dominican. Lord, we experience such freedom here in the United States. We pray that you'd surround them and guard and protect them by your heavenly angels and that your Holy Spirit would be upon them in power. We pray that you'd give this young man's testimony power around the world to give people the hope of Jesus. And we pray this in Jesus' name. And everybody said again, amen. If you don't mind thanking him for being with us. Thank you. Thank you.